Okay, step one. We're starting with an SVG file. I'm exporting mine from Adobe Illustrator. Um, if you've got a transparent PNG, then you can go online and there are several free converters that will transfer that into a SVG. Um, I'm going to show you quickly how to export it in Illustrator. I've got my file here, go to File, Save As, and then enter your name and make sure the drop down is set to SVG. Click Save, and then OK. And there you have it. Okay, step two. We are now in Blender, as you can see. Um, as an aside, I am using Blender 2.8. If you're using any version prior to that, before that, then I recommend upgrading because it's quite different before 2.8. And the first step is to get rid of our default cube, make sure it's selected and click delete. And then we're going to import our SVG file that we just saved. So go to file, import, scalable vector graphics, SVG. Double click on the SVG file once you've found it and it will import it into your scene. You might not see it immediately because it does it tend to import it quite small, but you can zoom in with the mouse wheel and then press the middle mouse button if you've got one to hover above it and there's my logo. Now if you look in the top right, our logo has been split out by letter and depending on what your logo looks like, you might have lots and lots of different curves here. So what we want to do as a first step is to make sure one of these curves is selected and then drag a box around our whole logo and press Ctrl J. And what that does is joins all of these curves into one curve to make things easier. Now the next step is to convert these curves into a mesh so that we can manipulate this in 3D space. To do that, go to Object, Convert to Mesh. And now if you click Tab and go into Edit Mode, you can see that we have all of these triangles. Now, as you can see, when I'm rotating, it's rotating around the origin, but my logo is off to the bottom right here. So press Tab to go back into Object Mode. So in order to reset our origin, we need to right-click on our logo, Set Origin, and then Geometry to Origin to center it in our screen. Now press tab to go back into edit mode. You'll see the edit mode change in the top left and click A on your keyboard to select all of our vertices and faces and then press E on your keyboard to enter extrusion mode. If you drag your mouse up, you'll see that we now have some 3D movement here. So let's make it about that tall. It doesn't really matter too much. And then press tab again to check what it looks like. And holding down the middle mouse button, I can see that we've now got quite a lot of vertical space in our logo, which should help out with the next step. Okay, so now we're going to use our logo, our 3D logo, to cut out some space on a plane. Now, uh, make sure that nothing's selected, click in, into empty space, and then press Shift A. And then under mesh, you'll see plane, click that. Now if we scroll around with our, if we move around with our middle mouse button, you can see that we've made this large plane in the center of our scene. I want to move this up a little bit so that it intersects pro properly our logo. So press the G key, and then press Y, uh, sorry, Z, there we go. Now you can see it's going up and down. Put it around the middle of our 3D logo. And now if you scroll to the bottom, you'll see we're perfectly intersecting this, um, this plane. Now in order to cut out our logo on this plane, what we're gonna do is go into uh, Modifiers, and on, on the right here, make sure that the plane is selected, and click Add Modifier. You should see Boolean, select that. And then under object, you want to select your curve, which is your logo. And if you scroll in a little bit, you can see that it's highlighted where the cutout will be. And you can see that it's perfectly cut out the shape of our logo, which is what we want. So click apply to apply that modifier. And then you can untick the logo or the SVG part in the top right. And you should see that we now have this cutout on our plane. Next, we want to add some um, particles into the air. So when the light shines through our cutout, you can see uh, the light beams coming through and that'll create a nice God rays effect. So in order to do that, uh, click off the screen and then Shift A and we're gonna make a cube. And that cube is perfectly sized because it's the size of our plane. Now on this cube, we want to change some of the materials so that we can create this internal um, substance. With the cube selected, let's go down to the materials tab and click new. And in the top left here, if you see, wait till you get the cross icon and then drag, sorry, try again, drag from the left and you'll create a new panel. And in the top left, click under here, shader editor. Let's get rid of this side and then zoom in. So you want to get rid of this principled uh, BSDF shader by clicking delete and then shift add shader volume absorption and then shift add again shader volume scatter now to combine these two shaders we want to also add an add shader which we'll put in the middle 
and then link up all the green dots here. So the two into the shader and the output into the volume. Now we've got some um, volume shaders within our cube, which is what we want. Okay, so now we are ready to set up our camera, uh, set up our light, and do the animation of the light underneath the plane. Now what I'm aiming to do is to move the light underneath the plane so that when the camera is above you'll see a shifting uh, god ray effect above the above the cutout. So if you zoom into inside our cube and rotate above you can see we've got this nice cutout effect going on. If we click on rendered in the top right and you can see um, the lighting's not quite what we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete the default light by selecting it and pressing the delete button and then I'm going to change the world color so make sure the world tab is selected click on color change that to black now you can see we've got complete darkness and then with this inside the scene I'm going to click shift a and go to light and then I'm going to create an area light now you can see already that we can see the area light shining through the gap which is what we want at the moment it's far too close. So let's move below so we can see what we're doing. So we're going to move our area light down a bit by pressing G and then Z, move it down on the X axis, on the Z axis sorry. And then currently it's pointing downwards. So we want, what we want to do is flip it so that the light is shining up through our gaps. So press R to rotate. I'm going to rotate on the X axis and then type 180. Press enter. And it'll flip the light 180 degrees on the X axis. And you can see from here now it's shining upwards and then go back to the above uh, the plane and you should see a tiny bit of light now coming through so now we want to set up our camera so we can hover the camera above the plane and then start to move that light to get the different uh, different angle effect so if you've got a numpad press 7 and it should go up directly above your origin here if you don't have a numpad you can click on uh, view viewpoint and then top and then we want to select, we want to set our active camera to this view. So you can do that by clicking view, align view, and align active camera to view. And you'll see that we're slightly off center here. So we want to press G to grab the camera. Let's make sure it's selected first. Press G and then Y. We'll move it down slightly on the Y axis. So it's more or less in the center. And then I'm also going to move it slightly in the X direction so we've got a bit more central. Now we can check roughly how things are looking by clicking on the rendering tab at the top and pressing F12 on our keyboard and this will render the current frame that we're on. And you can see the light is shining through the particles um, and coming through the gaps in our plane um, but we're not getting too much too many light rays above that so let's see if we can fix that by going back to the layout menu and then selecting our cube. I'm going to try reducing the density on our volume scatter shader to 0.1 Press enter and then um, on the rendering tab so let's enable volumetric shadows let's increase the shadow samples to let's say 60. We'll add a bit of bloom and some ambient occlusion and let's press f12 again see what, what it looks like now. Now that's looking a bit more atmospheric um, but we're still not getting these rays. I think what I'll do now is go back into the layout select my area light let's get below so we can see what it looks like and let's switch back to solid mode. Now currently this area light is the size of the plane so it's very big. We want to uh, scale this down so let's click on the light tab and look at the size. Currently we're at one meter. Let's scale this down to about 0.05 and let's move it a bit closer on the Z axis. So G then Z. Let's move it up a little bit. And let's go back to our rendering. Press F12. See what it looks like now. We're still not getting the effect so I'm going to try increasing the samples up to the maximum 256. There it is. That is exactly the look we're going for. You can see the nice particle effects as the light shines through the gaps. Okay, great. So now the last step really is to animate the light behind uh, behind the plane. So you want to drag up this um, this animation timeline at the bottom here, and you can see we've got our frames along the x-axis, and we want to end it at frame 100 because 250 is probably too long for us. Um, you might want a longer animation. If so, play around with the end frame. And what we're going to do is go back into our layout tab, go back to solid mode and let's look beneath this plane so we can see the area light at the bottom here. We want to drag up the animation timeline here as well. We can uh, minimize the shader for now so we've got, we can see what we're doing. And we want to position the camera so we've got a pretty good view of both our gap, our logo and our area light below. Now if you look at down below you can see this button here auto king. You want to press that because that will automatically create 
keyframes um, according to what the, the values you change. In this case, we're going to change the position of the area light and automatically keyframe that. So we'll do the animation between two keyframes for us. So make sure that your playhead is on frame one, which mine is, and press G to grab the area light. And we're going to move it on the X axis. So press X and then let's move it all the way over to the left here. And then click over here and you'll see that this yellow keyframe has been added automatically. And then we want to move our playhead all the way across to frame 100. Press G again and X and then move it all the way to the right. And then if you take off uh, the auto, auto keying feature and drag along, you'll see we're now animating between these two points. If you drag between frame 1 and 100, it's automatically filled out the rest of the data. Okay, there's one more thing we want to animate here and that is the power of the area light. I want it to fade in from um, from zero and then when it's at full strength it'll be in the center and then it'll fade out as it moves away. So let's first do our first keyframe, uh, our first frame. So let's set the power all the way to zero and then right click on the power and select insert keyframe. Now we want to move along let's say to frame 18. We'll move this up to let's give it a power of 30. And then right click again and click insert keyframes. Now again if you scroll between these two you can see the power is gradually increasing from 0 all the way up to 30. And then we want to create another keyframe, let's call it, uh, let's set this at 90. Right click, insert keyframe and then we'll create the dimming effect at the end. So go to the last frame which is 100, scroll all the way down to 0, right click, insert keyframe. So now you can see it scales down from the maximum 30 on these last 10 frames. And now if we move our camera uh, above so we can see the top here, let's look at the rendered view again, make sure that this is uh, behaving as we expect. So you can see we've got the light below and let's pick another frame, let's go down to one of the first frames and you can see the light dims and the light is scrolling across as we move through. So that's pretty much it, I think we're ready to render now. Let's go back to our rendering tab let's check some of the render settings. Um, so we want to make sure it's outputting to the correct location. Under the output tab you'll see this output section. Um, you can change this and you can right click and select open lo location externally. That will open it up in Windows Explorer. You can also change other settings here. The one we, one we want to change is the file format setting. You want to select AVI JPEG. Um, this will export it as a movie file as opposed to a series of images. And if you want to, you can change the resolution. We're going to stick the 1080 and the quality at 100%. And then you can press Ctrl and F12 on your keyboard. And that's pretty much it. Um, the render time will change um, depending on how good your computer is. If you find that um, the render is taking far too long, then try experimenting with the volumetric samples and the shadow samples. Decreasing that value may make uh, your render go faster. And then once it's done, you can find it in the temp folder or the output folder here. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you're interested at all in music because I'm making a piano game and this is the logo for that piano game. So next week there'll be another video on that. Take care and hopefully I'll see you next week.